Well, it's a it's a a story. It's a the standard, not standard, but a a uh, kind of old fashioned story about a a, a guy uh, discovering himself and going out to to um, uh, he goes on this perilous journey for love, and um, he's this terrified uh, fellow that's been locked in a in a in a compound, this one here, for seven years, and he's now out in the world with all these mutated monsters, and um, you see his growth through that, um, and it's it's there's a lot of humor in it. The monsters are monsters, but they're not quite monsters like we're used to seeing, and uh, it's just different in every way. I the the look of it is is magnificent. Australia is an incredible place to film. And um, when I first got here, I, I arrived in Brisbane, and I was in the city, and I thought, my goodness, how are we going to make this film here? And then I was Duncan Jones, our location manager, and Dan Henna, our magnificent uh, production designer, from who's famous from Lord of the Rings and all of the Peter Jackson projects. Uh, they took me around and unveiled this world that was perfect for the movie. Our locations are sort of split between Brisbane, between uh, Brisbane environs and, uh, Queen, and uh, the Gold Coast. And we are gonna shoot at a beach actually next week um, that's right down to the southern tip of the Gold Coast. As a matter of fact, it borders the Gold Coast right at, at where New South Wales and Gold Coast meet uh, and Queensland meet. Um, we've been in, it, we, so we've gotten beach, we've gotten um, sort of junglish, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's the paper bark tree forest. Um, we have um, some, a neighborhood that looks quite like the United States that we shot earlier this week. Um, the stage spaces are great. Uh, let's see. I, I mean, just every we we shot on a in, on this um, cattle farm further inland that was magnificent. I had this huge hilltop. Um, everywhere we go, it's jaw droppingly beautiful. We have um, a cavalcade of monsters. We have a a uh, what we refer to as the the uh, Queen Lamprey, and the Queen Lamprey is a little bit reminiscent of um, a movie made years ago with about the Queen Lamprey lives underground and emerges and is a a formidable adversary in it, and that's one of the people, one of the monsters that Joe runs into. He also runs into a giant frog in a swimming pool, the pool frog, which is my personal favorite. There's a, um, a crab at the end that's like no other crab in any movie. Um, I don't want to give away too many of the monsters, but there's lots. They're mutated versions of actual existing creatures. They're mostly amphibians and reptiles. And, uh, or in, uh, they're, they're not... Um, as in like aliens, something that we've never seen before. They're kind of reminiscent of animals we know or creatures we know that have mutated through the events of the, of the meteor and uh, what we did to combat the meteor. And they're, they're um, so they're a little, rec they're more than a little recognizable, but um, uh, very mutated and it's a, that's part of what makes it different as well. I've never seen that done quite like that before. Dylan O'Brien has been spectacular. He's really wonderful in this. And he just has a natural ability with humor. Not comedy necessarily, but he's, his character is very, very likable. I mean, I, of that, I'm positive people are going to love him in this movie. Michael has... Um, this is an uh, it's this is early in his career, 
And I've been doing this for a long time, clearly, and I, uh, I've done a lot of movies with, a lot, with some big-time directors and some first-time directors. And he impresses me every day. He's, he's, um, he has a vision, and he, uh, it's, he sticks to it. Um, he also, he just, this movie, he's the perfect guy for this movie. He just gets every, all of the nuances of the, of the story and the monsters, and, and he's a very, very talented young fellow. Uh, from South Africa, where he was in a kind of a, I mean, South Africa's a part of the film world, but certainly not a Hollywood guy. And um, he's going to be, um, he's going to make many movies. This is, this is going to do very well for him. This was Michael's 120th film as a character actor. And that was sort of, that was sort of done on purpose. I mean, that he'd be familiar, but he's also a wonderful, grisly, you know, is he a bad guy, is he a good guy? And uh, in this movie, turns out to be a very good guy. But, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's been round the, round the bend, Michael. <laughs> and um, it was fun to see him. I, ha I have never worked with him before, but um, he was great. Well, this set is the bunker that Joel, it's a kind of in destroyed state because a monster has been here. But this is the bunker that, that Joel and his cohorts live in for seven years when they go underground to save their, themselves from the events above. And um, so it had all of the, th the, first of all, you know, 15, 20 people have lived here for seven years. So what is, how do you make something look like 20 people lived in it that's a confined space and, and happily? And how do they survive? What, it, how, what do they do about this, that, and the, all of the sort of, you know, events of uh, when you live in a place, the things that happen. And he, he and uh, Catherine, is our set decorator, uh, and our prop person, they did a incredible job. Everywhere you look, there's a, there's a reason for the, the dressing. There's a reason for it. It's totally believable. Queensland, well, first of all, I, I personally live on the, on the beach in the east end of Long Island, and so I love beaches. Queensland has some kind of beaches, beautiful beaches. And um, Brisbane is a city, is this quality of life, joyous, happy city. That's where I'm living. Um, the people here are magnificent. I truly mean that. I've, I've had not a, a, a negative experience with one human since I've been here. I've been here since the beginning of December, so I'll have been here six months. And um, I, will, I can't imagine how I'm going to feel when I leave.